Gentlemen, cartoons are commodities that attract loyal viewing behavior amongst very demographic segments, resulting in substantial revenue potential and loss. Suffer and fuckatash! What in Sam Hill are you talking about? You're forgetting the most important thing. Everybody loves cartoons. <laughs> Meet George Jetson, Top Cat, the most effectual Top Cat. Never never do. Friends don't meet the friends don't, and the body's always family. Don't be better, smarter than the average pair. Cartoons. Where would TV be without them? Sure, there's a lot of choice on cable these days, but you can always count on people of all ages tuning in to their old favorites. Hey, a great idea. Just hit us. How about an all-cartoon network? Perfect. Turner has the greatest cartoons ever made. Our collection includes the best of the Warner Brothers classics, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and Porky Pig. That's all, folks. That's not all. There's also our old friend, Popeye. Here's me past record, folks, which speaks for itself. Plus all the MGM stars, Tom and Jerry, Screwy Squirrel, Barney Bear, and Droopy. Hooray. And since we just bought Hanna-Barbera, Turner now owns hundreds of memorable characters that are household names to families around the world. Barney! Fred! Boo-hoo! Yogi! Boo-hoo-hoo! Quickstraw! Boo -boo. Will people tune in and all Cartoon Network? Sure. Right now, ratings are consistently strong on all cable cartoon shows. Wherever and whenever tunes run on cable, they perform well. Did you ever have the feeling you was being watched? So, who's gonna watch the Cartoon Network? Well, the current baby boom means more kids are watching cable than ever before. But right now, they have only one choice, Nickelodeon. Even with its new cartoon block, Nick only makes it to 26% on the cartoon meter. But the Cartoon Network goes all the way with 100% cartoons. And here's another piece of research that may surprise you. Most cartoons are on between 7 and 9 in the morning, or between 3 and 6 in the afternoon, when even more kids are watching TV. But it turns out that the highest part levels, people using televisions for kids 2 to 11, is here, between 8 and 10 at night. But guess what? No cartoons. Nobody has programming for kids in the very period when most kids are watching, except the Cartoon Network. And oh! Even though other business is soft this year, ad revenues are up on kids' shows. Throughout cable, most children's programs are completely sold out. Now that NBC is getting out of Saturday morning kid vid, the demand for cable airtime will be even higher. But the original baby boomers spending more on their kids these days. It's a booming market. And speaking of baby boomers, they're tuning in themselves. Cartoons aren't just for kids. They're for us adults, too. On average, the audience for cartoons on cable is made up of 46.7% kids. But guess how many adults are watching? 10%? 20%? Not even close. The cartoon audience is a whopping 44.6% adults. That's about one adult for every kid watching. And why not? We grew up on cartoons. These characters are like members of our families. Ah, uh, my public. How they love me. It's true. Cartoons appeal to everyone. They cross not only generation gaps, they even bridge language barriers. The potential is even there for international expansion. Ah, senorita. This is Popeye, the champion samba dancer of the USA. And you know, cartoons are bigger than ever now, and they're here to stay. Just look at the success of animated features these days. By now, you see why the Cartoon Network is a good idea. But why Turner? He's smarter than the average bear. <laughs> Reason number one, no other cable programmer is so in touch with what makes people tune in. The Turner Networks combined make up almost 30% of all cable viewership. And nobody launches networks like Turner. Just look at TNT. Wow, blow me down. Number two, the HP deal gives us more cartoons than anybody. 
enough tunes to run for years and years. It brings our cartoon collection up to over 3,000 half hours of toon tonnage. What more could a guy ask for? This is old programming, not least, so we never have to worry about scrounging for shows or bidding against the competition. What will happen to those other startup channels when their programming licenses run out in a few years? <laughs> Along with the existing cartoons, we've also got Hanna-Barbera's active animation studio. And there's nothing mere about this. They're already busy making new tunes that will end up on the Cartoon Network in the years ahead. I'm a cop who's a carp. Number three. With such a large cartoon library, only Turner is capable of launching an all-tune network. So no matter who else shows cartoons, Turner will become the undeniable cartoon source for children of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Cartoon Network is also good news for cable systems. It will help your basic retention, because tunes give your subs one more reason to feel good about having cable. And as always, Turner will offer strong marketing support, character-driven tie-ins, kids' clubs, and local promotions that help operators do good for their community. This is a great honor. Imagine what it would be like to have all our cartoon friends and families in one place. We have the opportunity to bring those characters we love to generations of kids all across America. Good night, dear old dad. Daddy. Father. Come on, little Beverly Boo. Good night, my sons, my son. The Cartoon Network. Timeless tunes, Turner know-how, the biggest library, all your cartoon friends under one roof, 24 hours a day, anytime your subs want it. It's colossal, gigantic. Or I believe you'll conclude that emerging loyal viewing habits will provide <laughs> revenue generation. Not you again, you varmint! I can't take your nonsense. Can't you get it through your thick skull? People love cartoons. Wow, to blast you! <laughs>